Sun, what an amazing object. This nuclear furnace consumes 700 million tons of hydrogen every second, producing helium and 400 billion billion megawatts of energy, an inconceivably large number. The energy spreads out into the universe in the form of photons of light, and a vanishingly small fraction of them land on planet Earth, where they are captured by green plants and algae in a process called photosynthesis. This short movie will reveal to you the microscopic solar collector used by plants to capture light. Every student in elementary school learns that when plants photosynthesize, they use light, carbon dioxide, and water to make oxygen and the sugars, which are then converted by plants into leaves, stems, roots, flowers, and fruits, which, directly or indirectly, provide all of the foodstuffs consumed by humans and every other non-photosynthetic organism on Earth. Photosynthesis involves the capture of light energy, which is used to split water, freeing oxygen and adding the hydrogen to carbon dioxide, thus making sugars. The process of photosynthesis is carried out in chloroplasts, which are the small green spherical bodies easily seen by microscopic observation of leaf cells as illustrated in this photograph. Chloroplasts contain arrays of green membranous stacks which contain the chlorophyll molecules that capture light for photosynthesis. These chlorophyll molecules are organized into molecular complexes called photosystems which are visible as particles embedded in the photosynthetic membranes as seen in this electron microscope image. Plants have two types of photosystems, called Photosystem 1 and Photosystem 2. The structure of Photosystem 1 is shown in the following molecular animation. This is a molecular model of Photosystem 1. The brightly colored tubes and worms represent the structural proteins that hold the light-absorbing chlorophyll molecules and the electron carriers that are part of the reaction center. If we remove the protein components, then we can more easily see the arrangement of the chlorophylls, here represented as the blue ring structures with a magnesium atom, shown as a green sphere, held in the center of the chlorophyll ring. These chlorophyll molecules, called antennae chlorophyll, efficiently absorb visible wavelengths of light. They are arranged in a specific molecular order that permits the captured energy to be funneled to the reaction center, shown here. The reaction center consists of a series of special chlorophyll molecules that absorb light of slightly longer wavelength than the surrounding chlorophylls. This property enables them to act as energy traps. Once the photon's energy is captured by these molecules, it cannot return to the outer antennae chlorophylls. Its only escape route is through the electron carriers, which include quinone molecules above the chlorophylls. The quinones, in turn, donate the electrons to a series of iron-sulfur complexes shown as the yellow structures at the upper part of this image. You will now see an animation of light capture by this photosystem complex. It begins with capture of a photon of light by the outer chlorophylls, the antenna chlorophylls, followed by movement of energy among the antenna chlorophylls by a process known as energy transfer or resonance energy transfer. This involves a direct energy transfer without movement of an electron. Eventually, the energy gets trapped by the reaction center chlorophyll and starts a new series of events leading to electron movement from the special reaction center chlorophylls to the quinones and then to the iron-sulfur complexes, thereafter leaving the photosystem to be used in the chemical reactions that convert carbon dioxide into sugars. A photon is caught by chlorophyll in the antenna complex. It then moves via energy transfer, resonance energy transfer, from one molecule to another molecule. No electron movement, just direct energy movement. Eventually caught by the reaction center chlorophyll. It moves to the quinones, and then out through the iron-sulfur complexes. Another photon is caught. This one moves quickly to the reaction center chlorophylls, to the quinones, iron-sulfur complexes, 
and out. This photon takes a while to finally get to the reaction center chlorophylls, but finally gets there. Then out through the quinones, iron sulfur complexes, and out. This one is quickly caught by the reaction center chlorophylls. This one moves around a bit, gets stuck in this part of the antenna complex. The energy moves back and forth, back and forth, back and forth between a couple of molecules, and then eventually breaks free, finds its way to the reaction center chlorophylls, and then via electron transport, electron movement, the energy moves to the quinones, the iron sulfur complexes, and out. Now you've seen how plants use these highly structured light harvesting systems to capture light and harvest it for the biochemistry of photosynthesis.